there is an interesting fact throughout history. If you want to know the past, ask a historian. If you want to know the future, ask a Jew. Why? Well, it just happened to him yesterday. So he'll tell you what's going to happen to you tomorrow. We've been warning for months. Jewish people all over the internet have been warning for months. A huge war is about to break out between Israel and Lebanon, presumably with the United States getting involved, which would basically lead to massive, massive war, hundreds of thousands of casualties, and uh, potentially a global nuclear war if Iran gets involved, which is a good chance that Iran will get involved as Hezbollah is its largest and strongest proxy. And if it loses it, it'll lose face forever in the international criminal community, terrorist community. It needs Hezbollah to exist. And uh, if predictions are right, Israel will go in and completely destroy it. But not only destroy it, um, destroy huge swaths of Lebanon, which is an issue for the world because Lebanon is not Gaza. You see, in Gaza, it's basically a terror state top to bottom, everything about it's a terrorist state. Lebanon's a little bit different. You see, Lebanon started off as a Christian nation. The French took it over many, many, many years ago and changed it, and really, it was a very secular state until a little over 50 years ago when uh, the Civil War broke out, and then, uh, well, the Islamists won. And ever since then, there's been this undercurrent, this, this slow fight between the conservative, I guess, the, I don't know the right word, but obviously there's the Islamists, the radicals, and just the normal secular people, the seculars, let's call them. And, uh, well, it's coming to, to the forefront because that is the battle in Lebanon. And you might be asking, why does that matter? The simple answer is, the reason why this matters is because in Gaza, the fight was against everyone. In Lebanon, the fight is against Hezbollah, which means that you're going to see a very different dynamic. There are militias inside of Lebanon that are ready to fight. The problem is, the U.S. is not 100% on board, and while the U.S. has sent dozens of shipments, I think the number is over 60 shipments of military aid to Israel, the specific things that would put all the right pieces together are currently not in Israel, which means that this war is not going to play out like it should. And how do I know this? Well, because remember, you want the future, ask a Jew. Which means that this was going to be a very bloody mess. That's what war is. Israelis somehow have kept that to a minimum. What predicted, what was predicted to have, will, would have been hundreds of thousands of casualties on the Gazan side, was lowered to 15,000 civilians. Maybe now it's a little bit more, but a shocking number. Just a shocking number in, in history. But that's not gonna happen in Lebanon. In Lebanon, the, there is no backing of the U.S. of these militias. They said they we're going to arm them. It's way too late for that. that. That was supposed to be months ago. So they're unarmed, which means Hezbollah is going to completely take over them. But it's a fight, never ending. And so here we are at the brink of a world war, because if you think that the protests in the United States was something, even the protests around the world was something for the deaths of 15,000 civilians in Gaza, you don't even know what's about to come when the U.S. is involved in hundreds of thousands of deaths over three, four months. That is going to be unprecedented in the world, the protests that are coming out of that. And uh, that might push, why would that push everything over the edge? Why would it push the world over the edge? Because our enemies fight specifically when they see weakness. See, they know they can't beat us militarily. We're the most superior army in history. We, nothing can beat us. But morally, if we are unwilling to fight, well, then it doesn't matter if we have the best weapons in the world. We're not going to pick them up. And they just come in and stab us 
with the knife. Be with us with knives. They all, all they eat is knives. We don't do anything. We don't lift a finger. And that's what we see in Lebanon. We had the chance. We've been warning for months. His follow was becoming too strong for years and years and years, but it really came to a head these past few months. And uh, the world did nothing. And now we're a bunch of new citizens out by hundreds of thousands. And the world still is basically doing nothing. Which means our enemies see us as really weak. And protests around the world that are pro Hezbollah and anti the West, Western powers, our enemies are going to think that the West is vulnerable. And uh, that's the perfect time to attack. There's never a better time to attack the West than when it's most vulnerable. The British and Chamberlain was saying, peace in our time. I think that he said it. I'm quoting him, frankly. Right, all the, the, I mean, when Germany invaded Poland, the British, uh, the UK declared war on, on, on Germany and it did nothing for a full year until it invaded France. And then what did it do? It ran away, Dunkirk. That's when enemies that are small, weak, and powerless become evil monsters and try to attack us because they don't realize that uh, at the end of the day, we'll start creating nukes. And we have nukes. War is coming. How do we know? Well, the Jews predicted it eight months ago. So, history has now been revealed. The future has arrived. And war is at the horizon. See you next draft. Draft is coming. If you think not, many miracles are coming. Maybe. Who knows? In a video.